Hello from Pune. Uh, my name is Vidula Mahiskar. Today is Children's Day. Wish you all a very happy Children's Day. I work at a place called Garware Balbhavan where we run a small activity center. Uh, these activities at our center are not segregated according to subjects but according to topics. It could be a story, it could be a song, it could be some festival. Today I am going to show you some of the modules that we do. It, not too long ago it was rainy season and the place, our place was swarming with uh, lots of insects. The first toy that I will show you is that of a cicada. Cicada is a bigger brother of cricket, it makes quite a racket. If you have ever been to Bombay's uh, Sanjay Gandhi National Park in Borivli, you would see that place is full of cicadas making huge noise. First of all, we will uh, fold an origami cicada. For that, you need a square like this. Uh, I would like to tell you that all the toys that I am going to show you today are either documented on Padmashri Arvind Gupta's toy, uh, website called arvindguptatoys.com or Garware Balbhavan's website. So you do not have to remember or write down anything. Just sit back and relax. So this is a square, you fold it half diagonally, then uh, fold these two wings up and down, make a ribbed body and turn it around and fold it into cupboard fold or half like this. When you fold this origami model, you will see that you make these two channels that are at an angle. So if you pass a thread through that channel, you can actually have a walking cicada ready. So you just loop this cicada in the thread like this. You hold the thread like this, the cicada is only going to move in the direction of the angle of the cicada. So, if I move my right hand now, you can see that the cicada can climb. It will only go in the direction of the angle. So, you will to make it climb again, you will have to get it back and then start all over again. And you have your climbing cicada like this. Cicada makes quite a big, big racket, so we will also make a small toy that makes a cricket sound. For that, you will need a crown cap like this, then a button, a rubber band and a thread. In the button, two diagonal holes of a button, in one of the holes you pass a rubber band and in the other hole you pass a strong thread with intermittent knots here. Now you just need to pass the rubber band over the crown cap so that it stays put. Since it has these grooves, you do not have to do much, it will just stay put there. So now you have your cricket or crown cap tick ticky ready. To make it sound, all you need to do is pass your fingers over the knots on the thread and you will have a nice cricket sound. This is your crown cap tick ticky. Also in the night, just after the rainy seasons, you see many fireflies. Fireflies are, are these amazing uh, light emitting flies that you see just at the twilight and that is actually bioluminescence and they emit lovely yellow green light. So we thought we will make a very wonderful firefly gr greeting card. For that you need to take a black paper like this and then with the help of a white pencil or a green pencil, you draw an outline of a tree here. You can also see a moon here. And then to make this tree glow because of fireflies, all you need to do is take a, uh, a big needle and poke some holes in it. The moment you hold this greeting card over the light, you will see the tree is now full of fireflies that are glowing. Isn't it pretty? Okay. Uh, the next thing, the another thing that we did on that day was a jumping bug. For that, you need a sliver of the plastic mineral water bottle. You cut two semicircles and then you just need to take a small suction cup, make a hole in this uh, C and pass the suction cup through these holes. And now just to uh, see, just to look like a bug, I have drawn a uh, ladybug here and in the and kind of punched a hole in the middle and this will go over the suction cup. Now your bug is ready to jump. All you need to do is press this suction cup on the table and leave and you will see your bug will jump. You just need to achieve balance between the small suction cup and the push that these two semicircles can achieve and then you have your jumping bug. Another module that I would like to show you oh, before that, I would like to tell you one story of Henry Faber that we talked about when we did insects. Henry Faber was a great entomologist in 1850s. And all he had at that time was one magnifying glass and a huge oval table 
and amazing amount of patience to just keep watching insects. In fact, he used to say that I'm not, I don't want to classify insects. All I want to do is watch their behavior and document it. I'll tell you one of uh, one of the stories uh, that Henry Faber's son wrote about his father. Uh, Henry Faber was once watching these wasps. If you know, these are these small flies that make uh, their uh, their nest in the plug holes that you see. And you see, they actually lay their eggs, and then they would plug it with a white cement-like thing. So uh, of course, there were no plugs at that time. But Henry Faber was watching this wasp, one wasp making this small nest in a hole nearby. He kept on watching it and the experiment that he performed was amazing. So what he uh, noticed that, uh, that the wasp laid an egg inside the hole and then it left a paralyzed insect there, it could be a spider or something. So that the moment the larvae hatched, they could eat on the spider and gain some energy to break the nest and come out. And the, just before pl plugging the hole shut, he used to inspect the uh, kind of nest that everything is okay and then start plugging. What Henry Faber did was that every time the wasp went to get some mud inside, mud to the uh, nest, he used to pull the uh, spider out and keep it out. The wasp came and realized that there is no spider inside, so it again put, picked up the spider and put it in. Again the wasp went out, again Faber would bring the spider out. This happened 53 times before the wasp got exhausted. So then Henry Faber note, noted that uh, uh, that uh, that insects do not have this adaptive capacity to you know learn from their experiences many observations that henry faber uh, wrote down are still valid now after so many years there is a beautiful book called children of summer that henry faber's son wrote about his uh, uh, his travels with his father please do read it um, while we were actually roaming around our gardens uh, looking for insects we also spotted a chameleon so this is a project where we actually uh, did a, a camouflage activity. Uh, 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 we drew many patterns on an A4 sheet and these are actually you can see these are not patterns on a chameleon but we did whatever artwork we wanted to do. So and then using the same pattern we made patterns we made a chameleon. So if I hold it like this vertically you will see that you cannot spot a chameleon. And then if I hold it horizontally like this you can actually see a chameleon here. And now, uh, then we also talked about why, how a chameleon changes its color, whether it is a pigment in the skin or whether, whether it is an optical phenomenon. So this was the module on insects. Next I would like to show you our pet module. Many children have pets at home and two most, two favorite pets are cats and dogs. So let us see what we did with cats. Two very peculiar things about cats are its night vision and its ability to always land on its feet. So let us see how we explored these two modules. All you need to do is draw a cat on a paper, color it well and then the legs, so this was the cat and fold the legs one forward and backward so that it looks like this. This is the bottom view and this is how it looks from top. No matter how you release it, it will always turn and fall on its feet like this. So next we will make uh, cat eyes, now this is not for night vision but this is a, cat, a small model of a cat that will follow you wherever you go. So if you make this model, you, uh, this model looks somewhat like this and this is absolutely non-trivial physics. What happens is see the, if you uh, kind of do this and keep it in your room, no matter where you go, you will see that the cat eyes will always follow you. This happens when you convert a 2D object into a 3D, you insert a 3D element into it and then you will see that wherever you go, this, this kitten will always follow you. To make this all we have done is actually you need to make a cat head with just the eyes and then color the whole thing up with whatever colored eyes you want the cat to have and then cut this portion of the head and stick it and just and puff it a little bit and then you get a cat with eyes that follow you all the time. The next toy will be a trotting dog. For this you just need a, a small rectangle of paper and then uh, this is an A4 paper, it is not a card sheet. You divide it into three parts lengthwise and breadthwise and you cut it so that you get four legs. The middle part, one of the parts could be head and the other part could be tail. You fold the legs down, lift the head up 
cut to small ears so that it will also make the face and you kind of roll the tail up. One last thing you need to do is cut these two legs into slants in, uh, uh, into towards the center so that it will help it to trot. Now you fold the legs down, keep it on some paper that has uh, some card sheet that has a little bit of friction, it is an inclined surface and then you leave it and you will see that it will trot. Sometimes it will just slide and sometime, sometimes if the legs are too behind, see it will just tumble. Now if I folded the legs behind, it is going to tumble like this. So the legs have to be slightly in the front like this and that is all you need to achieve and fold the head up and you see now it will actually trot. This is your trotting dog. While talking about anatomy of the pets, we also marveled at our own amazing body and we did, we tried many different things. Suppose you have, can you touch your fingers like this? Can you roll your tongue like this? Can you find your blind spot? So these are some amazing things that you can try with your body. And we also realized that we have many systems in our body which function so well. So we actually made an accordion fold human system. So these are small things, small systems that we drew. The front and the back portion, see it actually folds into an accordion fold like this. So this is your front and this is your back. This is how this system works. Then we drew some of the systems in our body like for example this is skeletal, then there is digestive, there is pulmonary, there is circulatory, there is nervous system and this last part just before the rare is the most important thing. What we decided is that we will draw a system on this blank page where it is a capacity that we want to have but we do not have. And this was an amazing imagination experiment. Some of the kids drew an, an, an another digestive system. One child would love to eat so much so he said that if I have another digestive system I will be able to eat a lot. And then he, some of them drew flying things, whatever capacities that you want to have in yourself but you do not have, they do uh, with great imagination on this. It was flying, it was some kind of sensors, it, were, uh, it, was, it was another system, nervous system or digestive system. So this is your accordion fold human system like this. We also made an A4 sheet skeleton. Now A4 has a golden ratio. Side, side ratio. So if you use an A4 well, you can make a very simple and very elegant proportionate skeleton out of an A4 sheet. So this is just one A4 sheet turned into skeleton. If you want, you can also know names of all the bones. You can write on this like for example, this would be femur, this would be humerus, there is ulna, radius, tibia, fibula. These are rib cages. Of course, we have 12. We have not cut 12 in this but you can make a very proportionate skeleton like this. We also made a skeleton using a stapled paper. So now this is a very proportionate skeleton with 12 ribs and a spine and everything. If you see from behind, all the joints are made out of a stapler pin. So this is a stapler pin and then we have our, actually this was used as a bookmark but it is a very dynamic bookmark. So every joint has a staple here so that it actually moves like this. So this could be your x-ray, right? If you are standing, if your x-ray looks like this, how would you be standing like this? If it was right in, in front of me, it should have been like this or like this. So uh, this was our x-ray skeleton. Uh, since uh, we knew how to make stapler joints, we also made one more thing out of staples and that is a rattlesnake. We, we made many ovals like this and drew a snake pattern on this. But these, the, all these ovals were joined using staples. So now we have individual joints that actually move like this and this is your slithering snake. And since this was a rattlesnake, what we did was we attached a small bell which can ring and this would be your rattlesnake model like this. Just because we used a stapler pin, pin joint. One more activity that we did was that of... Uh, uh, that of tracing of, uh, we kind of trace the whole outline of a child or an adult and then we try to draw whatever systems that we have here. It need not be all the systems. For example, this is a, a picture of uh, a small child. He has drawn a skeletal system here. You can see the bones and the digestive system and there is a little heart as well here. 
So, this is what uh, uh, actually and if you can hold it against your body, you will actually see where all the uh, parts in your organs in your body are. So, this was an activity that we did with human systems. Uh, one of the modules was also uh, looking at designs of uh, everyday objects. We used to get one object from home to the center every day and mar marvel at the design, see how it is designed and also see how it can be used to make fun or learn new things. For example, if we would get a spoon from house, we, we would see how a reflection in the spoon can be you know from the front or from the rear, a convex as opposed to concave mirror. Then if suppose there is a head massager like this. Uh, we used to pull it and see uh, how resonance is seen. So, if I it has these long and short wires. So, if I if I tuck on the uh, lo longer wire only the longer wires would uh, would vibrate and if I do it with a shorter one only the shorter ones would vibrate. So, this is actually a head massager come resonance experiment. The next was uh, some day uh, we also made a, 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 a toothpaste tube pump. Actually, a whole, we got a whole toothpaste ensemble there. We also we used the box as well as the tubes. So, uh, for the box, what we did is we, we made two or three toys with it. This is one toy that you just cut the box into slivers and then cut it into a uh, in head and uh, two uh, two legs and hands. And then if you move it, since it can make into a rhombus and a parallelogram, you have a nice dancing boy. You can also make a dancing girl like this just by cutting head and hands. Since the cross section of this toothpaste tube is uh, either a rhombus or a parallelogram, it can do this dance. If this cross section was a triangle, you would not be able to do it. We also looked at the box and saw where the toothpaste tube was manufactured and see how it, what mode of transportation it took from, uh, from where it was manufactured to come to Pune and then it was a geography map lesson as well. Another toy that we made out of the box was this jumping frog. You just have to attach a rubber band here and tie two knots at the diagonals and the moment you keep it on the table, press it down and release it, the frog would jump. So, this is your jumping frog. The next toy we made from an empty tube was washing it well, attaching a balloon valve to it. This is a torn balloon valve which is a one way valve, bottom to up is green light and top down is red light. You push this in, make a hole and attach a small piece of straw here. And now if you kind of push it up and down in water with every stroke a little bit of water will climb up the balloon valve, it would not be able to go down and it will squirt out from here. We will just see, see this is a very simple water pump. And then if you think that there is no water inside, there is plenty inside. This is the pump that we made. Even the lid was used uh, for study. If you can see that the lid of the toothpaste tube is conical. This was actually shown to us by our, our friend uh, Mr. Rajiv Tambe. He said the uh, lid of the uh, toothpaste tube is conical. Why is it designed like this? That early morning you are groggy and you tend to when you come go up and brush, you tend to drop the lid a lot of times because you are not as alert. And if the lid was cylindrical, it would just roll away. But since it is conical, it makes a round and it is easy to find the lid. That is the genius uh, of the design of the lid of a toothpaste tube. Another thing that we saw was a newspaper. Hmm? Uh, Let us try and tear a newspaper. Okay? I have these two pieces of newspapers. If I try to tear it like this, you can see that it does not tear very well. But if I try to tear it in this orientation, it is the way we read it, you can see that I can make long cuts like this. This is because when a, uh, when a newspaper is made, when a newspaper is manufactured, it is made out of cellulose fibers, right? So, cellulose fibers orient in a particular way. So, if you tear along uh, the orientation, it is easy to tear into long strips, but if you do it in a, at a right angle to that orientation, you cannot cut it well. Another thing that has orientation is, uh, is a handkerchief. You would have play, uh, you played blindfold, a blind man's buff all the time, where you tie uh, a person's uh, eyes and then you try to catch people. Have you ever tied it like this? No, right? You always try it, tie it diagonally. This is because when you try to pull it like this, 
you see you cannot it cannot stretch but the moment you hold it like this you can stretch it and then it's easier to tie on your thread and also what happens is when you tie it well it can actually stretch and shrink and it fits very well on your ears and then you really really can't see and you can't cheat so uh, we we actually you can actually make a very beautiful mouse like this by just folding and tying some knots in the handkerchief and now this is made using this diagonal orientation because it needs a bit of a stretching so it was made like this and then this is your pet mouse and then the it you can pet it for a while but it won't stay with you for long and it will just run away like this so this is your pet mouse another thing that we did uh, with uh, that does not need stretching and it was used in it was made in this orientation and not this was this experiment this is actually a bag that we stitched and then this is a square now if you want to uh, kind of fit this square into this box all you have to do is insert the square from two diagonals and then gradually pull it up pull the bag up and you will see that the square fits very easily into this bag and since this is this is a puzzle on conservation of area you don't want your uh, your cloth to stretch that is why you use the uh, uh, the r regular orientation this is how you can study about cloths let's make a sewing machine this sewing machine is an all kerala toy it was actually made every each and every element of this toy is made from coconut so this is these are two uh, kharata sticks coconut fronds uh fronts here uh, the midriff of the coconut front and earlier this was used to be a small coconut that actually falls off it's an immature coconut that falls off but right now i couldn't find a coconut so this is actually a foam a foam sheet and then just to make a heavy i have pressed a uh, marble here so now the way it works is that this is a long uh, for the long midriff that has been uh, uh, kind of pushed it into a circle this is a central line and there are these two sticks that are tangled like this and the moment i spin it now you can see sewing machine like sound this actually has even a forwarding action like a sewing machine so let's try to sew a, a very tender leaf so the way the leaf is tangled is like this so i just tangled it pass these two sticks over it and now na swing machine chalao so the leaf passes through the machine and then if you can see it well later on if you get it out see if you can see the stitch here from both sides it's actually not a stitch it's just some tiny series of tiny holes that look like a stitch i'll just hold this leaf against the light and you can see how the stitches look so this is how a sewing machine works it is a it is it makes a lovely sound like a sewing machine and it also makes these stitches because it has this forwarding motion because of these two sticks let's look at some of the leaf activities now since we are on leaves uh, if you have people leaves like this these are people leaves you can just cut two leaves and make a cat like this this is one leaf that has been cut along the rift like this along the vein and this is half of a leaf this is a cat with a tail if you have a jackfruit leaf this is a jackfruit leaf you can make a bull like this with two big horns and a long tail this doesn't need any uh, any glue or no, no stitching nothing it's just folding and tucking in that's all and you make this very beautiful bull like this with two long horns if you have a coconut frond like this it is a very beautiful newton's third law of motion experiment all you need to do is tear two small portions along the midriff like this hold it in your finger and then pull it hard and then you will see that the middle portion shoots up you know 20 30 feet and this is actually newton's third law in action if you have mango leaves you can make a very very beautiful and genius puzzle all you need to do is tear the midriff like this up take another leaf pass it through this through this midriff and then make a hole and 
kind of push this into the hole like this, push the stem and this is your puzzle. The puzzle is that you need to separate these two leaves without actually pulling this off or tearing it. There is a very elegant solution to this puzzle and actually after you solve it, this easily comes out like this. And this is how you separate your two mango leaves. Your grandparents know many such puzzles. If you, are, if you have your grandparents around or if you are fortunate and have your great grandparents in your house, please talk to them and see what are the puzzles they made, what are the games they played and you will learn a lot about it. While on coconuts, let me, let's make a bird in a cage, let's make a persistence of vision toy. For this you need to make a bow like this, you, you take two uh, uh, karata sticks and then hold it up, uh, one, one from this side and from, one from the other side because you will know that it is thick on one side and thin. So, you just align it opposite and make a bow and then pass the thread through an old sketch pen which has a hole at one end and then draw whatever two pictures you want to overlap on two separate sides and attach it to a, an old refill. Now the way to tangle this refill is that you pull the thread from the middle, give it half a rotation and push it back and now your persistence of vision toy is ready. The moment it also converts straight line motion into rotatory and you can also see that the fish is in the bowl now. Next I would love to tell you about our bird module. We uh, simply folded some birds like this. These are origami birds that do not need any scissors or glue and we painted them like for example, this is a crow, this would be a kingfisher, this would be a heron with dangling legs and this is a small parrot. So we made many birds like this and told stories. Uh, we also made some flying birds. This is a very simple mechanism. This is a flamingo. All you need to do is fold this flamingo with, uh, uh, with wings like this and then just attach a coupling like this. This is just a V-shaped paper that has been stuck with a cello tape and then you can see this is your flying flamingo. We can make this mechanism slightly sophisticated using, using some stiff straws and uh, uh, straws and again a bird. This is a bar headed goose. We were talking about uh, flamingos and uh, storks and bar headed goose that navigate through uh, um, hundreds of miles with just the internal compass. This is an amazing bird, it is a bar headed goose, in Marathi we call it Patta Kadamba. It can fly over Himalayas and uh, with such low levels of oxygen. So it has these bars, so it is called as the bar headed goose. Now this is a, an amazing coupling made with uh, just straws and this is your flying bar headed goose. Uh, we also made a toucan here. A toucan is a bird that has this huge beak which can look very bulky. So uh, if we wanted to make a toucan that can perch on your finger, it cannot right because it has this huge uh, beak that is very off, uh, off uh, that you know puts everything off center of gravity. Just so that this toucan can perch on your finger, we simply attach a bunch of uh, paper pins here which is a counterweight and now your toucan can balance on your finger like this. So this is a balancing toucan. We also made some birds, this is a crow with a small coupling that can actually flap its wings like this. You can also make it into an owl with flapping wings. The simple mechanism is you just attach a, a thread here and then pull with the central thread so that it can actually flap its wings like this. This is the mechanism. We also folded some birds like this. This is a, this is a, this is now ori, not origami, this is kirigami actually. We also cut it a little bit and then no glue needed, but we cut it. This is a hummingbird. This is again a simple bird, flying bird, same mechanism. You would actually need lots of gears and couplings to make these move motions, but paper folding is amazing. You know, it can actually just with a few folds, you can make this dynamic paper toys. What are uh, and the other paper toys that you can make is this is an elephant that can if I pull the if I pull the tail it can actually lift lift its trunk like this. I can salute you, aapko salam karega. And then this is a coin crow. 
and this is a drinking bowl. There is this. If I just lift it up, it is going to drink from this trough. This is actually paper engineering. There is so much geometry that we can learn while we are actually folding paper. And origami actually originated in Japan, and there is a tradition that on all festivals the family would meet and then they fold uh, they fold paper. Uh, this is their classic model. It's an origami crane, and there is a very beautiful story story of uh, Sadako and a thousand cranes. This is a Holocaust story. Sadako is actually a Holocaust survivor, but then after a few years she has cancer because of the radiation that that was uh, uh, that was thrown upon her. And then uh, she is told that if she folds a thousand cranes like this, she will survive and she will get well. So, it is a story uh, where she tries to fold cranes, unfortunately she cannot. She folds a few, uh, few hundreds and then she dies, but her friends then finish folding these two cranes. It is a very beautiful story, everybody should read it. It is Sadako and a thousand cranes. A couple of weeks ago, there was this huge ter tornado with, with really uh, uh, devastating winds. So, we were talking of winds and wind speeds and we built a very simple anemometer. Anemometer is something that actually would uh, measure wind speeds. This is, this is how you make it. This is a card sheet actually. It, a sliver has been cut like this and you fold it like this and just attach some weight here. Now, for example, this is a paper pin that we have attached and then if you hold it in the wind direction of the wind, this actually flies because of the wind. This is a very empirical scale, it is not true, but then at least it gives you some feel of the measurement of the speed of the wind. So, it will fly according to the wind speed and now and it can actually correlate with the number here. We realize that to fly, fly kite, you only need wind speed of about 5 to 10 kilometers per hour and tornado, there is something called as a Beaufort scale where you actually know you can correlate wind and uh, actually how you can actually feel it. Uh, in the in in your surroundings and uh, uh, we know now that about 50 kilometers per hour it's like a tornado and uh, one child even uh, even said to us that when we drive on freeways it's like 18 80 to 90 kilometers per hour and then we are running faster than a tornado uh, once we also did a module on traditional toys i'll show you a few of them this is a traditional toy that is made in orissa assam and it is actually made out of palm leaf it's a tiger uh, this is of course not palm leaf we made out of a card sheet and it is actually a flying tiger. Just, we, just like we did uh, joints using stapler pin earlier, these are joints using a simple thread. We just tie knots at both ends and this also gives a wonderful demonstration of centrifugal force. But this is a traditional toy. One more traditional toy is this. These are two actually uh, birds that you see here. This is a white eye and this is a barbet and then they drink from the trough or they eat from the trough. I will show you from the rear. It is a coupling that is made like this. These are lever linkage toys. There is also one more. This is an eating piranha. You will see it from back. You will see how it is how the levers are linked. Another thing that we explored that we see in our day to day lives is uh, tiling. Uh, it is it's called as tessellation. Sir Roger Penrose who is a Nobel award winning physicist is also famous for his Penrose tiling. Tessellation is something uh, that, uh, that actually uh, shapes are arranged in such a way in a plane so that they do not overlap or there is no gap in it. For example, if we have squares like this, huh? uh, essentially what you have to achieve is that angle of the all the shapes that come around this point have to add up to 360 degrees. For example, angle in a square would be 90. So, you can actually add 4 and it would be 360. Similarly, an equilateral triangle would do because it is 60 degrees. So, again it, they can add up to uh, 360 degrees. A uh, square certainly works. A, pe a, a regular pentagon would not work because it is 108 degrees, but a hexagon would uh, tile very well. So, this is called as tessellation. These are regular shapes, but we also explored to tessellate some irregular shapes. There is a particular way to do this. For example, let us see how this bird tessellation is made. You just take a square and remember that whatever you take from the bottom, you add it to the top 
and whatever you take from either left or right side you switch it like that. For example, to make this bird tessellation what I would be doing is that just cutting two tiny squares from the bottom and then this was their orientation. So, you get them on top here and then you cut a little bit of beak from this side you kind of glue it first then cut this beak here and get it on this side. So, you get a bird like this you just need to make one first uh, uh, kind of sample or a stencil and then using that you can make many birds and see how well they nest into each other and tessellate. If you have been to some old uh, old uh, uh, buildings like Taj Mahal you see these uh, tiles very well. So, this was actually a square you cut one part of the square this small triangle and attach it to this square. So, that you get these two shapes that can tessellate. So, you just make multiple such shapes and see how well they nest into each other and tessellate. You can just make your own tessellations like this and decorate either your cupboard or doors with your own wonderful patterns. I will end I would like to end this session with a story. This is a story that shows geometry by paper folding, but let us forget geometry now and have some fun. I would like to call Zahida now to help me with the caps. This is a story that has many caps. So, please come Zahida. Hi. Hello. Uh, so, Zahida in my story Zahida is a girl that lives in Kokan area. Kokan is southern western uh, coast of India and uh, the, the grain that grows there most is rice. You know how rice is sown? It is sown in rainy season and in mushy waters. And since it is rainy season the farmers there wear a cap like this on their heads and work in their fields. This cap is called as an irla. So, Zahida always wears this cap and works in her field. Zahida also uh, goes to a school and where she reads the newspaper and she reads about what happens in a city. So, she is very intrigued at uh, the prospect of going and seeing a city. So, uh, once in her uh, uh, when her vacations begin she packs her bag, sits in Kokan Railway and comes to a nearby city which happens to be Ratnagiri. And uh, then she, she first of all she is very scared right, she is not seen so many vehicles, so much of no noise and after some time when her excitement subsides, she realizes that, it, realizes that she is hungry. So, she goes to a nearby hotel, eats poha there and uh, asks the hotel wala that I am new in this city, can you find me some work? So, he says uh, the hotel wala says good. My Bavarchi has anyway run away. So, why do not you become a Bavarchi? So, uh, uh, Zahida has her irla with her. She just makes a couple of folds in her irla and transforms the cap into a Bavarchi's cap like this. So, she becomes a Bavarchi. Now, Zahida is a small girl. After a week of being a Bavarchi, she is bored and she says, What? What? I want to do something else. When she is a Bavarchi, a grocer comes to visit their hotel all the time selling groceries. So, she decides to be a grocer now. So, she changes her cap into a grocer's cap like this and becomes a grocer. Again after a week of being a grocer she is bored, but uh, Zahida is a very hard working grocer and she earns a lot of money and becomes rich. And she realizes now she wonders what should she become when she has so much money. So, she decides to be a money lender a good one. So, he, she changes her cap into money lender's cap like this and she becomes a money lender and, and you know for how long? Just one week and again she is bored. Uh, now, she is standing outside her building and thinking what to do next and suddenly building next to her catches fire. Fire brigade wallas come and they extinguish the fire and then Zahida realizes that ever since she left her village and came to a city, all the things that she did, all the jobs that she did were to earn money and not nothing to help the community. So, now she decides to be a fire brigade wala. So, she changes her cap into a fire brigade wala cap like this. A fire brigade's cap always has a kind of a beak at the back to protect the spine from the debris that is falling out of burning buildings or uh, establishments. So, she becomes a fire brigade wala for a week. After a week, she, she decides to do something else. She has met a police wala while she was a fire brigade person and then she decided decides to be a police wala at least for a week. So, she changes her cap into a policeman's cap and becomes a policeman. Now, uh, she has tried so many things since she left her village and came to city. Now, she realizes it is high time 
I want to go back to my village. Uh, she took a train to come from her village to city, right? Now she decides to take a boat like this. She sits in a boat and slowly her boat is uh, sailing towards her village. But what happens is suddenly when she actually sees the coast and she thinks that in an hour I can actually uh, go home, suddenly a huge storm comes and huge waves, actually tsunami like waves uh, uh, come and then her boat actually hits a huge rock and hull of the boat hits a rock and it actually breaks down. And then boat actually falls into a tornado and the rear part of the boat also hits the rock that also falls away. This part of the boat is called as the bridge that also hits the rock and the bridge also gives way. Now there is nothing left of the boat, no front, back or the bridge. So boat starts to sink. Uh, Zahida also falls into water and she knows how to swim but it is difficult to swim in stormy weather. But she does not uh, you know panic. She goes to this boat, finds a life jacket like this. Where is it? This is a fluorescent life jacket with air pockets so she does not drown, it is easier to swim and she swims her way home. That is our little uh, story with Zahida. Thank you Zahida. Thank you. Experiments in the lab are very important, you do them. But there is world outside, there is life outside that is magical and wonderful. Do experience it, keep your eyes open, give, give attention to as many things as you, uh, as you can experience and see. For example, if this is uh, beginning of November, if you can see what are the trees that are in blossom now. There is Boots as we call it in Marathi or Indian cork tree with its fragrant white flowers is in bloom. There is Pathodia in, is also in bloom. Saptaparini is in bloom with great small tiny white flowers and if you pass, uh, pass from an avenue that has Saptaparini, you can have this sweet spicy smell coming. So just experience the world. What are the kind of birds you are seeing now? Uh, after the rainy season there are a lot of dragonflies and bugs around. So you see many bee eaters now. If you look at the skies there is Venus and Jupiter and Saturn that you can see. What are the phases of the moon that you are seeing? Just love it and experience this whole wonderful nature which is around us. If you love it I am sure you will take care of it. Just like the teacher in the film my octopus teacher said we are not just visitors here we are just we are part of this. Thank you very much for listening to me and wish you all a very happy children's day again.